Uh, thank you, John. My role in the session today is to paint the big picture for Australian horticulture, but as John said, there's a consistent theme that runs throughout the, uh, the session. The next presenters, Matt and, uh, uh, and Roger, will be talking about the healthiness of a varied uh, diet of fresh fruit, nut and vegetables that could turn our lives around. But I'll be making the point that the strength and the future prospects of this industry are based on, the, on this demand for fresh and varied product that will grow as consumer incomes grow throughout the world. My big picture of the Australian horticulture industry is a, a triptych of three panels. Firstly, I outline the nature of Australian horticulture. I then look at some limited ev evidence on the financial performance of the Australian horticulture industry. And I finish up with an outline of, the, of ABES' assessment of the future prospects for this industry that takes into account world horticultural trends and challenges. So I'll start off with the nature of Australian horticulture. Horticulture production is organised around the many different climate zones in Australia, so that, many of, so that the many different producing regions has its particular window for supplying the fresh market or processes. The great bulk of production of fruit, nut and vegetables occurs in the temperate and subtropic regions, but tropic and grassland regions are also important producers. The so-called grassland producing regions uh, mostly the irrigated regions on the lower Murray River, but also the Gascoigne River of Western Australia. The fruit and vegetable processing industries have been declining in recent years. Employment in fruit and vegetable processing peaked in 2002-03 at about 13,400 persons, but has since declined to less than 10,000 persons. Increasingly, the fruit and vegetable markets are oriented towards producing for the fresh markets. Now this is a very diverse industry, but broadly the industry can be considered as being made up of fruit, nut and vegetable and wine grape components and an other horticulture component sector. The Australian horticulture industry, including the wine grape in uh, the industry, accounted for 21% of the gross value of Australian agriculture in 2009-10. Fruit and nuts made up about 46% of this value, if you, if you include wine grapes. A further 35% is vegetables. Other horticulture largely made up of nursery, cut flowers, cultivated turf and specialty crops like oilseed poppy and pyrethrum daisy account for the remaining 20%. Over the last 20 years, the gross value of Australian vegetable production increased at an average annual rate of 2.6%, while the gross value of fruit and nut production, excluding wine grapes, increased at 2.2% a year. Now, to put this in context, this is much faster than the 0.6% annual growth rate for the rest of the Australian farm sector. Now the gross value of Australian wine production uh, increased strongly to a peak of $1.9 billion in 2001, but it's all been all downhill since then. And it's simply been the case that the scientific wine production techniques that delivered Australia comparative advantage in the 1990s and 2000s uh, has been adopted by the rest of the world, even the old world producers in Europe. The Australian horticulture industry is protected by strong uh, quarantine barriers. Currently, the great bulk of Australian imports of fresh fruit, nuts and vegetables come from New Zealand, the United States and, to a lesser extent, China. But increasingly, there are other countries that can meet Australia's sanitary and phytosanitary requirements. Thailand is one of these countries, but its fruit and vegetable exports to, uh, to Australia still only totaled $8 million in 2009-10. But imports of Chinese apples commenced in early 2011 and imports of apples from New Zealand and bananas from the Philippines are possible in the future if these countries can meet Australia's strict import protocols. Australia shifted to being a net exporter of fruit and vegetable products in 2003-04 and this is largely due to increasing imports and decreasing exports of processed fruit and vegetables, the blue bars on this diagram. But net export well, sort of fresh fruit and vegetables also declined in the 2000s, the orange and green bars on this diagram. Drought was obviously a factor throughout the 2000s, particularly in the Murray-Darling Basin that accounted for about one third of Australia's uh, uh, horticultural production. But the key factor is when it comes to processed products, Australia simply finds it difficult to compete on world markets because of its lab high labour costs relative to other horticultural producing countries like Thailand, Brazil, Chile, South Africa and Peru. So turning to the performance of the Australian horticulture industry, ABES only comprehensively surveys the Australian vegetable industry, 
but some information is also available for fruit and nut industries from ABES survey of irrigated horticulture, uh, irrigated agriculture. For vegetable farms in 2008-9, the average farm income, defined as receipts less cost, was an estimated $204,000 a farm. An estimated 10% of vegetable farms had a negative farm cash income in 2008-9. The rate of return on capital when you exclude capital appreciation in 2008-9 of the average Australian vegetable farm was an estimated 5.3%. Now this compares with rates of return for broadacre agriculture in Australia of only 1% in 2008-9. So it's not a bad year for, for, for vegetable growers uh, when you consider that 40% of them reported themselves as experiencing drought or below average seasonal conditions. Debt levels of Australian vegetable farms are also quite surprisingly healthy. The average equity ratio of vegetable farms in 2008-09 was 85% and only an estimated 2% of vegetable farms had a combination of equity ratios of less than 70% and negative farm cash income. Survey information for other horticulture industries is scant, but some interesting financial data is available from ABES survey of irrigated agriculture in Murray-Darling Basin. Unfortunately, I only have 2006-07 for this level of disaggregation, but uh, uh, our, most of our uh, survey is going to be uh, published in, uh, towards the end of March. Now, if you look at this diagram, estimated returns per hectare, which is sort of a gross measure rather than a farm income, uh, virtually a gross margin measure, but it was positive for all horticultural crops reported. Compared to vegetable returns, palm fruit returns were higher, while table grape and citrus returns uh, were broadly comparable. Stone fruit and wine grapes uh, returns were significantly lower. Now, the overall impression from ABES survey results albeit with less than complete information for parts of the industry, is of an industry that is reasonably comfortable in financial terms, though some smaller farms face financial difficulties, and I would say some wine grape farms also uh, were, were less well off. The final part of my presentation is about future prospects for Australian horticulture, and this requires a quick look at trends in the world horticulture market because Australia is obviously integrated into this market through imports and exports. And at this world level, it is largely a good news story. This slide shows growth in food consumption by type since 1995. You can see that the largest increases over the last decade have been with horticultural products, and that's the lighter coloured bars on this diagram. So tree nuts, vegetables, spices, fruits and stimulants, which is tea, coffee and cocoa, are the top five growth areas. The strong growth in demand for fruit, nut and vegetables at the world level is also evident from the sharp increase in world exports of these products since 2000. The increase is particularly marked for unprocessed fruit, nut and vegetables, which have grown at average annual rates of 9% for fruit and nuts and 7% for unprocessed vegetables since 2000. If you need any proof that this growth is income, gro is income driven, look no further than the fresh fruit and vegetable exports on this diagram, the green uh, line at the top. These exports dog-legged upwards in the 2000s when world incomes took off, particularly in the populous countries of China and India, and dipped in 2009 when consumer incomes fell due sharply to the global financial crisis. The value of horticultural production in Australia over the medium term will be buoyed by these trends. It will be further buoyed by continued population and income growth in Australia, allied with an apparent strong preference of Australian consumers for Australian grown produce. Nevertheless, ABER is projecting slightly slower growth over the medium term for the Australian fruit, and nut and vegetable industries due mainly to the strong Australian dollar. There are some really exciting emerging horticultural industries in Australia, including almonds, olives, berries, Asian vegetables, and exotic tropical fruit. And all these products have really, really strong, healthy product images. And organic certification is adding value with a growing part of the Australian horticulture industry. But ABER is aware that there are some potential challenges for Australia's horticulture industries. The first set of challenges is related to the resources boom in Australia that is leading to a strong Australian dollar and seasonal labour shortages. 
Obviously, a strong Australian dollar reduces the competitiveness of Australian horticulture exports. It also means that there will be increased demand from other countries to export fruit and vegetables to Australia. A strong Australian dollar increases the incentive for countries to go through the rigorous requirements of meeting Australia's strict quarantine requirements. Because of the Australia's resources boom, getting farm labour and fruit and vegetable pickers will be more difficult and costly. This is a problem being experienced throughout Australian agriculture. Some government initiatives aimed at easing this problem for the Australian horticulture industry include the Pacific Seasonal Workers Pilot Scheme and the web-based labour information service called Harvest Trail that seeks to acquaint travellers and others with work opportunities around Australia. Water reforms, especially in the Murray-Darling Basin, will be important over the medium term. In 2008-09, irrigated agriculture in the basin accounted for 40% of the gross value of Australian fruit production and 18% of the value of Australian vegetable production. The exact nature of these reforms is not known, but it will probably involve significant reductions in maximum sustainable diversions of water. The reductions will be made through voluntary sales rather than compulsory acquisitions. ABARE's research that will be presented in an afternoon session of this conference suggests that these reforms will have less impact on in intensive agricultural industries like horticulture rather than the more extensive irrigated agriculture like rice and cotton grain. For example, reductions in sustainable diversion limits of around about 20 to 25 per cent a year, ABARE modelling suggests that horticulture is likely to incur a reduction in, in its gross value of production in the basin of less than 5 per cent compared with 22 per cent for cotton and 10 per cent for dairy. So in summary, the Australian growth industry is a growth industry, accounting for more than 20% of the, the value of Australian farm production. There are some threats to Australia's comparative advantage in horticultural production, mainly the strong Australian dollar and labour shortages. But the Australian industry will benefit from income and population growth in Australia and the rest of the world that favours consumption of fresh rather than processed fruit and vegetables. So that's Australian horticulture, a big, vibrant and moving picture. Thanks very much for your attention.